Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Come on in the room, come in the room, come in the room. Thank you all for tuning in for this week's live with Women Achieving Victory Everywhere, Bridging the Gap. My name is Taniqua Matthews. For those of you who do not know who I am, I just want to talk to you very briefly this evening about a, a small topic. Now, as you can see, I'm in the car still. Uh, we're coming, headed back from the track meet. And so I promise I will not be before you long, but I just wanted to come in here and just share with you. Of course, you know, I don't want to be disobedient. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for coming in. I want to talk to you from a, talk, a topic this evening about the salt. Uh, and how we are the salt of the earth. So I just wanted to come in very briefly and encourage you because I don't know how um, you understand that. Let me tell you something. This day alone has been quite challenging for quite for um, a lot of us. But before we start, I also I always want to go into prayer for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning and for giving us the mobility of our limbs. Thank you for allowing this time to come in and to be able to do what you have called each and every one of us to do. Thank you for allowing us to see a new month, a new day, the new beginning. Lord, we thank you that you remind us that we are on the last month of the year of 2021. And we are so grateful for what you're going to do in these last 31 days of, of our year of 2021 thank you right now lord we pray right now that you would just continue to be with us rest rule reign and abide it's in the mighty name of our master's king we say amen 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 thank you thank you thank you all for tuning in and listen i wanted to just talk to you from a topic of being the salt of the earth right and um this morning i just want to um just really touch on this really quickly this morning we woke up we got up and we had some power outages in the area. I mean, like 32,000 plus people were without power. And so in that, of course, you know, it's in the middle of the rush hour. And this is the middle of, you know, children going to school, people going to work, so on and so forth. And so it kind of put a little monkey wrench and a damper on some of the things that we're used to doing, our normal routine. But let me tell you something. I, I'm so grateful that God gives us light. That when he said, let there be light, he put the, he put the light in the, in the sky. And so the sun was able to illuminate and be able to show us that God's light. We don't need to worry about anything else that's going on, but God's light illuminates and illuminates in our life. So I'm so grateful that even in the midst of that, it gave us some time to go back and reset and recapture and think about some things. This was first thing in the morning. It's probably like around seven, seven o'clock this morning when that, when it happened. And then. You thinking about that it's the first day of the last month of this year. And so we know that when we're at that last final stage, right, what happens? We got to keep pressing forward with our foot on the gas. We can't let up. This is not time for us to let up. This is not time for us to wait and say, OK, we're just going to just allow these last 30 days to just float on by and wait until the new year so we can put out these new year's resolutions this is the time we, we got to keep our foot on the gas and we have to keep pressing forward so i wanted to talk to you really quickly about a topic of being the salt of the earth because in the bible it talks about the salt right talks about the salt and it says that you know even even in that that the salt is something that seasons the salt is something that preserves the salt is something that gives flavor right that's what salt is if you really look it up in, in the dictionary it talks about the salt is something that preserves and you know it, it it seasons something it does something a little different so you know like when you go through mcdonald's drive through and you get some fries and you don't get the salt on them they taste a little bit different so we have to remind ourselves that us being the salt of the earth that god has placed us on this earth we are here to season and flavor some things we are here to help and um, change the environment we're here to change the dynamic we're here to to say okay no we're not going to we're going to do like the um the toys of us commercials to say we're going to turn that frown upside down we're going to um uh, make sure that we're not speaking any negativity out there because we know that life and death is in the power of our tongue and we're going to eat the fruit thereof so when we're speaking those things we want to speak positively we want to make sure that the salt that we're flavoring and seasoning the earth with that we have that we're making sure that it's producing some fruit in each and every one of our lives. That's what we want to make sure that we're doing. And so 
even in that, you know, God was speaking to me um, about uh, about being preserved and, and how salt is used to preserve things, right? And if you look at even on some of the canned goods and some of the meats and all the different things that we eat, you know, he uses those things to, he uses salt to preserve things, right? And so when God is allowing us and reminding us that we are salt, the season. He said that he, I'm telling you, I ain't making this up. Go look it up for yourself. He said that we are the salt of the earth. That means that we're seasoning. We're sprinkling some things. He didn't say that we are Mrs. Dash. He didn't say that we was pepper. He didn't say that we were hot sauce or ketchup or any of those other things. He said that we're salt because one thing that we have to know that if you're looking at most of the ingredients that you use to season and flavor food has some substance of salt in it. Can I tell the truth for a minute? And so I just want to remind you, you know, because I, I, I'm reminding you, but I'm talking about me too, because I had to think about this for a minute. You know, um, we know that salt is a necessity of life and it's a, it's a mineral that was used in ancient times, you know, um, and it's a component sometimes even of ceremonial offerings. But let me ask you a question. Let me pose a question to you for a minute. For those of you, um, let's think about this for a second. We talked about um, in, in biblical times about Lot's wife. We hear all, a lot about Lot's wife. Don't know her name. Her name was never mentioned. All we know that it was Lot's wife. And when they were leaving the city, right, they she was they were told, don't look back. What did she do? She turned, she turned and looked back. She turned into a pillar of salt. Now, here's my question. This is what I'm thinking. Why, why what, what was it about the salt? What was it about the salt? Why not the sand? Why, that, why didn't she turn into um, some other substance? But God God said in the word, it said that she turned into a pillar of salt. And then he's reminding us that we are the salt of the earth, that we are to season and flavor the things around us. And that's what we have to remind ourselves that every day when we get up, every day that we have the mobility in our body, every day that we continue to transform our mind, we have to remind ourselves that everything that we need God has already planted inside of us. All we have to do is take the things that's inside of us and make sure that we're sprinkling those things out into the atmosphere. Now, we have to make sure that when we're sprinkling those things out into the atmosphere that we're seasoning and it's producing fruit. Just goes goes back into the um, reaping and sowing. Because when we're sowing, we're sowing and we're putting that salt into good ground. It's going to make it flavorful. Because one thing that you have to understand, if you're putting too much salt on something, then it's going to be salty. If you're not putting enough salt on there, then it's not going to have any seasoning. So we want to make sure that we have the right consistency that's out there. We have to have a healthy balance. So I'm, I just wanted to come and encourage you that when you're going out there and when we're coming out there each and every day, because we still got time left. I, I don't want you to think that we're going to wait until 2022. We got, we're going to keep our foot on the gas and we're going to keep pressing forward. And we're going to make sure that when we're going out each and every day, because now it's time. Now we're talking about the harvest. Now it is time. Those things that we were waiting to birth, it is time to push. It is time for us to keep going forward. That's the reason why that salt is needed to continue to allow us to birth those things that it has been we've been holding on to. It's time to birth those ministries. It's time to birth those business ideas. It's time to birth those things that we've been holding that we've been holding so dear to. Yes, go ahead and register for that class. Go ahead and apply for that um for that um business license. Go ahead and make sure that you find, sign in that lease. Make sure that you're getting those keys. Make sure that you're doing what you said that you was going to do. Now, listen, we wrote that vision in the beginning of the year. Now, for those of us that did write the vision, you know, God said, write it, make it plain. That means make sure that it's visible so you can see it. So when you look, when you wake up and that's one of the things that you see, you're looking at that vision. He said, make it plain upon the tables. He said, it may tarry. It might take a little bit. It's not, it's not always going to come. We're not always going to get microwave results. It's going to take a little bit of time. He said it may tarry, but we still supposed to wait on it. So now I'm telling you right now, don't let go of the vision. Don't think that just because it was the, it was delayed that it's denied. Don't think that because you have that salt to season the earth that it's going to be held up. It's not going to be held up. He said that he will redeem the time that the canker worm is taken away. We are the resource. We are the resource. God is the source. Let me be clear about this. God is the source. He is the source. He is the source of our strength. He is the source of our life. He is the source of everything. So God is the source. We are the resource. That's why we are human resources. We are to make sure that we are being resourceful to one another, right? That's the reason why we have to connect with one another. That's why the Bible tells us where two or more are gathered together that he will be in the midst. That's why we connect with one another to help one another. We hook up and then we make each other stronger. We, we continue to keep pressing forward. One encourages another. That's what we are here to do on this earth. We're not here to, you know, pitter patter and, and pacify anybody's ego and none of those other things. We are here to do God's work. And sometimes we have to be reminded that you have to have this, this resolve. 
I don't care who it separates me from or who it identifies me with. Are you serving the Lord? Are you doing what he's told you to do? Are you doing what he's purposed for you to do? Are you making sure that the salt that you have that is being is seasoning the earth that he's telling you to season? Are you making sure that when he says go, that you're going? And you're going with enthusiasm and diligence because he has a purpose and a plan for me. And what he has for me is far greater than anything I could think or imagine. Or are we holding on with our Kung Fu grip, trying to wait for, for things to be perfect? And I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to me as well, because there was times and some things that I was holding on to. And I said, you know what? I, I just need a little bit more. I just need you to, to confirm some things. I just need you to, I need to make sure that I'm hearing clearly what you're saying to me. I just want to make sure that you No, we have to stop that stinking thinking. We have to change our mindset from all of that stinking thinking and totally trust in the Lord and lean out on our own understanding. He knows everything that we need and we have to understand that once we lean not on our own understanding, when we don't try to sit there and figure it out, when we're not trying to make sure that we're doing everything okay and we're over analyzing things, making sure that we're, we know that we know that we know, we don't have to do all of those things. Only thing he tells us to do is just to do, do what he's purpose to us to do. He's, he's the potter. We're the clay. He's shaping and molding us to what he needs us to be. We just need to go. We just need to make sure that we're moving forward. We're allowing him to order our steps. When he says to do something, we just do it. That's all we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to just be in forward motion. We're supposed to keep our foot on the gas. It is not time for winding down. It is time to reap that harvest. So we got to make sure that we're being out there in that vineyard. Are we laboring in the vineyard so the salt that we have in us is being able to be seasoning the earth like we're supposed to be doing. And when I, I talk about salt, I'm, I'm talking about the actual salt. But we are the salt. We each and every one of us are the salt. Each and every one of us have something. Each and every one of us have gifts. Each and every one of us have talents. Where if we don't know what those gifts and talents are, as my pastor would say, you ask God. He'll share with you what it is that he's he had the talents and gifts that he has inside of you. So you can do what he has called each and every one of us to do. So that way we are able to season our area like he needs us to season it. So we can't do it if we hold holding on to it. You got to you got to rip that package off. You know, take off that, take off that, that tape of doubt, take off, make sure that, you know, you know how, when you first get, um, get the salt, uh, you get those seasonings and you got to, um, take the little inside piece off. You got to unscrew it and take the little piece off. But when you open up the, the salt thing, you have to peel that little piece of tape back. You got to peel that tape of doubt back so you can open it up. You got to flip the lid up a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. But make sure you have a healthy balance. We don't want it to, we don't want to over salt. We don't make sure that we're putting too much out there and we don't want to make sure that we're doing just uh, just a little bit. Like, I'm just going to do enough to check the box. I'm going to do enough because so so God can see me, so somebody can see me, so they can say that they seen and heard me doing A, B, C, D, or E. No, we have to do what he says do with enthusiasm and with diligence and courage. Here's the thing. We have to be courageous. It's okay to fail. I had to learn this. It's okay to fail because the one thing that's wonderful about failing is when you fail at doing something, if you failed the test before, you have a fresh start to do the test over. That means you have a clean slate to start all over again, to do something better, to get a better grade. You have more, you have more time to study. You have time to focus on the areas where you may have been a little bit weaker in so God can make you strong. That's the reason why you have to understand that we learn from our mistakes. Prayerfully, we're learning from our mistakes. Prayerfully, we're we're able to move forward, and we're not just sitting stagnant. Like I'm just gonna wait for this to happen. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just put my hands in here. I'm just I'm just gonna wait. We don't have time to lie and wait. We don't have time. So how are we supposed to reap a harvest if we're if we're not do, um, willing to do the labor? Somebody got to do the work. And if we're not putting in the work, then who's doing the work? And we can't expect that somebody else is gonna do the work for us, and we're gonna reap the harvest. We can't expect that we're going to gain. We're going to just connect to somebody else and they're going to we're going to be able to receive those things that they're doing. Each one of us are purpose for our own assignment. Each one of us are purpose with our own gifts. Each one of us have things that we need to be doing. So we need to focus on those things. We need to turn our channels and our antennas to make sure that we're turning to, to the, um, the station of, of God and making sure that we're hearing what he's saying, making sure that we're putting our ears to his mouth. So we know that that's him that's speaking. He said the sheep know his voice. So if we're doing what he says to do. And if we're listening clearly to what he's saying to do, then we already know how to operate. We know how to function. We know how to do what he's called us to do. 
We already understand that. And that's what he wants us to be reminded of, that he's preserving us for a purpose. He preserved us for a purpose. Yeah, we, we went through some stuff. Yes, it's still some hard times. Yes, we're getting reports, phone calls. There's a lot of things that's happening. We have people that are grieving, people that, you know, like we're in the holiday season. It's a lot of different things that's happening right now in our lives. But we have to also be reminded that even in that, God gets the glory, number one. And number two, as we're going through these situations, which may be these hardships and these trials and tribulations, they come to make us stronger. We gain strength. We gain strength. We don't forget or negate the fact that, you know, our, our loved ones are gone. We don't negate the fact that, you know, we may be in the midst of some financial difficulties, and you know, at this time. But God makes provision. He makes provision. We just make sure that we're putting our seeds out there. Are we putting our salt out there in the atmosphere? Are we flavoring? Are we making sure that we sprinkling that salt out there? Are we just doing something just to be doing something? Are we just saying something because it sounds good? Because it makes us feel good for a moment. We have to make sure that everything that we're doing, we're doing with enthusiasm and with a purpose. We don't have time to waste, ladies and gentlemen. There's no more time to waste. Listen to me when I tell you. Yes, we are at the last straw. Last straw. There's not much more that we're going to gain out of this if we take our eyes off of the prize. We take our eyes off the prize. So that's the reason why we got to have, it's time It's time to have tunnel vision and blinders. You know how um, on, on those horses, when they're running races, they have the blinders on. So this, they, this way they don't look to the left or to the right and they don't see what's going on. We have to have the blinders on to, to know that the enemy is going to try to come immediately to take things from us. That is his MO. He's going to try to come immediately to take things from us. Immediately. He's going to get, you know, we're going to get to a point where I'm telling you, talked about this uh, last week. We get, we have something, God gives us something, and then there's something that tries to deter us or try to distract us from, from what it is that he's given us and turn us another way. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. That's why we got to keep our eyes on the prize. We have to understand that there's going to be trials. We have to understand there's going to be tribulation. We have to understand that there's going to be hardships. We have to understand that we're going to go through adversity. But it's what we do in the midst. That's what, help, that's what helps us get over the hump. That's what helps us get over the hurdle. And, and so I'm thinking about this, you know, as I was leaving the track meet, I was standing there at the track meet with some of the, um, some of the children today. And the young lady was asking about jumping over the hurdles. And I told her, I said, well, can you, she said she was, you know, trying to understand certain things. So I have to ask you all this question. If you stand there and you just, you think that you're just going to just jump over the hurdle or you have to have some speed, you have to gain some momentum. This is the time now we have to continue with that same momentum. If we didn't have, if you didn't have no momentum, it's time to get your momentum. If you're um, slowing down, it's time to pick it up just a little bit. It's time to pick it up so we can jump over those hurdles because those hurdles are going to come. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as the kids say. It's not going to be that way. We just have to make sure that we're doing our part. That's the only thing that he requires of us. He requires us to do our part. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing? We want the blessings of God, but we don't want to do no work. We can't say, oh, yes, Lord, we thank you. You know, uh, we know that you're going to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Okay, but what's going on inside of you? What are you doing? Have your, has your power been activated? Do you really trust in God? Do you really believe in him? Do you really have faith that he can do it? Do you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, that he can move mountains on your behalf? Or is it just when things sound good and when, when it looks good, when it feels good for a moment? Do you really honestly believe what you say or is it just words? Because there's one thing about just saying words and there's another thing about really believing in the words that you say. It's a difference. You can say go or you can say go. It's a difference. When you start doing things, when there's some forward mobility, when the faith is actually in action, when you really have faith in action and you believe it in your heart and know in your soul and in your mind, that's what makes the difference. That's what he wants us to understand. That's what he wants us to remember. He doesn't want us to, he doesn't want us to be confused or in about anything. And that's one thing I had to remind, remind us, you know, that we don't use the word confusion. We say, you know, things are a little unclear for a moment. We're not confused. Mm -mm. God is not an author of confusion. He's not an author of confusion. He's not an author of faith. Those are not spirits that he has given to either one of us. No, he said that <laughs> we don't have the spirit of fear. But we got one of love, 
power and a sound mind. That means that the things we are right in our mind and we have power and we have love and we don't have to worry about anything that's going on because he tells us to be anxious for nothing, not one single thing, nothing. He said, but in everything with prayer, supplication and thanksgiving, we can let our requests be made known to him. And then he'll, in exchange, he'll give us the peace. That's what he tells us. That's why he wants us to cast some cares to him. That's why he said that we can come to the throne boldly as lions. That's the reason why he gives us these things because he wants us to remind, he wants to remind us who we are. We forget that. We love to say, you know, and this is one of my favorites. We love to say we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We are. But do you also know that you are the salt of the earth? The earth. The earth. That means that we sprinkle. We sprinkle a little salt everywhere we go. So we have to be reminded that whatever we put out is what we're going to get back. Are we putting out salt? Are we putting out sugar? Are we putting out misinformation? Are we putting out hot sauce? Are we putting out pepper? Are we really putting salt out in the atmosphere? Are we really sleezing and flavoring and doing what we're supposed to be doing? What he requires of us to do. Are we really doing our part is the question. And that's what he's saying to us at this time. God, are you doing, are, are, are my daughter, my son, are you doing your part? Are we doing it diligently? Are we doing it enthusiastically? Are we doing it without question? Are we doing it without disputing and complaining? Because he said, do all things without disputing and complaining. So we can be a faultless generation. Or do we do it and say, oh my goodness gracious, I can't believe. And then we want to complain about different things. Are we really doing all of the things that we're required to do? Yes, we understand. None of us is perfect. Not one. Not one of us is perfect. We all sin and fall short every single day. You know, like we said, there's some things that we have to, we have to go through. We have to endure hardships. That's why if you know... As, as the, the uh, biblical scriptures, as they're coming, there are certain things that he put in there. It's strategically pinned in there. So he knows. That's why he sent his, his only begotten son on this earth to walk this earth. So he can understand what it's like while we're here on this earth. You know, we are spiritual beings wrapped in flesh. You know, the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. That's why we have to crucify this flesh every single day. We have to starve it. See, whatever we feed is what is going to grow. So we feeding our spirit man and woman, then that's what's going to grow. If we starving that, that's what's going to grow. It's the same way if we think about it, we're going to the gym and, you know, and, and if we're building, if we're just doing exercises for our upper body, what's going to happen? Our upper body is going to get strong. But if we do exercises for our legs, then our legs will get strong. So if we neglect one or the other, that's what the part that's going to get strong. So he said, when we are weak, he'll make us strong. That's the reason why we got to lean on him. Lean on him. And <laughs> not our own understanding. He know everything about each and every one of us, even the number of hairs that we have on our head. God knows all. He sees all. Remember, he's omnipresent. He know everything about every last one of us. He don't want us to, he don't want us to fail. He don't want us to stumble our foot on the stone. He, that's what he said. It's not in my, it's not in my words. It's in there. He don't want us to stumble our foot. He want us to grow. He want us to prosper. He want us to have life and have it more abundantly. But what is in us? Are we using the gifts, the tools, the talents, and the salt that he's given us? Because we the salt. Are we using it to season the earth? What, what God has told us to do? Or are we just holding on? So I just wanted to come in here quickly and encourage us all, and I say us, I'm included as well, to encourage us and to remind ourselves that we are the salt of the earth. We are the resource. God is the source. We are the resource. We're the human resource. It is our duty and responsibility as laborers in the vineyard of God to make sure that we are doing our part. He, you, and we have to look and make sure that we're not laboring in vain. Or are we just doing something just because we can't do that? We have to make sure that we're doing our part like God tells us to do and make sure that the gifts and the talents that we have are being used for the uplifting of his kingdom, not just 
for us to do like you know like we said like with bruce almighty how he was using it and being selfish about it no we don't want to do that we want to make sure that we're doing what god is telling us to do because let me tell you something one thing i know is obedience is better than sacrifice and for those of you who understand and know what i'm talking about we know what we're talking about obedience is better than sacrifice we don't sacrifice anything we don't sacrifice we don't we don't we don't sacrifice we don't sacrifice for the we don't sacrifice the kingdom no huh god is the source everything else is a resource that's why he says seek me first he gonna give us everything else that we need if we seek god he gonna give us what we need we can't get everything we need and then ask for him and then ask him to bless it lord i want you to do this and then uh, uh I, i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna buy this house this car and all of these other things and i'm gonna go um marry this person over here and I'm, i need you to bless all of that that's not how god operates he doesn't operate that way seek the king he gonna give you the kingdom seek the king he'll give us the kingdom the things that we need but we got to make sure that we stayed and focused on him and doing what he says to do at all times even when we don't feel like it even when we get tired he tells us don't be weary in doing well because in the right season you'll reap a harvest but you, you can't give up so we got to understand that the harvest is waiting he said it's plentiful, but the laborers are few. The harvest is waiting for us. But what happens is we don't want to do our part. We want to hold on. We want to just pull back sometimes. We get tired. We get frustrated. We get upset and angry. But we still got to keep going because let me explain something to you. There's times when we're right there at the edge of the breakthrough. We're right there at the point of what we need. We're right where he needs us to be. And we stop. And we walk away right there. And, and, and if, the, if I could give you a visual for a moment of what I'm talking about, if you are thinking about, if you think about a, a runner that's running in the Olympics, for example, let's think of, let's talk about Usain Bolt. Let's think if Usain Bolt was to get right before the finish line and just stop right there before he crossed the finish line, he just stopped. That's what we do sometimes. We do not want to get to that point where we just give up we don't want to we we tired yeah we tired you think we're not tired and if you're a parent you're even more tired if you have a job you're tired if you have a business you're tired you've been on the earth long enough you're tired because we have to understand that we have to be mindful and be doing the right things with the 24 hours that we're given and if we're being prudent stewards over our time and managing our time wisely yeah even with managing the time and say, okay, from this time to this time, I'm going to do this. And we lay everything out. We have calendars to do, notebooks, checking off this, checking off that. But we still get tired. Yes, we may not get enough. Some of us don't get enough sleep. Some of us get too much sleep. You know, there's a lot of time we don't eat right. We eat on the go. There's a lot of things that goes on, but we are still supposed to do what God is telling us to do. And we have to be obedient. That is like the, the biggest thing because we shy away from it. We don't think that this is what we're supposed to be doing. You know, we find one thing and we, we figure that that's what we're supposed to be doing. But God is trying to show us another avenue. He's trying to show us the narrow gate. Not the wide gate that leads to destruction. He's trying to show us the narrow gate. And we steady want to just, you know, roll with everybody else. We're trying to roll with the Joneses. We're trying to keep up with the Joneses. We out here trying to spend our whole entire um, paycheck on Christmas time. Banking that we're going to get thousands after the new year for tax season instead of making sure that we're being prudent stewards over everything that we're given. I'm not I'm not saying that to, you know, to be harmful or hurtful to nobody. I'm just saying I, God wants us to be mindful of the things that he's given us. He's given us a job. He's given us a home. He's given us a family. He's given us a mind. You know, that's why it says we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to understand that when he gives us something. We're supposed to take care of those gifts, like our family members, our children, and all those things that he give us. We got to take care of those things. We are going to be held accountable for the things that we do or don't do. So why not just do what we're supposed to be doing if we're going to be held accountable for it? So if you think about it this way, if you own a business and, own, and nobody shows up that you've hired to your business, you got to run your business by yourself. Are you going to run your business into the ground? Are you going to make sure that you have people that's going to show up? Are you going to have people that's going to be lazy, falling asleep, um, stealing from
from you take you know we have to make sure that these temples and the things that he's given us that we're taking good care of them and the things that god give us that we're taking good care of them because we're going to be held accountable for those things we're held accountable for our actions we're held accountable for that and it goes back to the law of reciprocity we're going to reap what we sow so when we sow into good ground we're going to reap a bountiful harvest of good when we sow the other way that's what we're going to reap so we have to make sure that we're doing our parts and i promise you i'm just i'm like overjoyed i'm listening to the testimonies and the different things that's happening even for my fellow church members and my sisters and my brothers the things that's going on in their lives and god is just revealing himself over and over and over when i tell you we pray for different things and and we we stretch our faith to a point where like somebody said like a rubber band and you stretch your faith to the point where you feel like you get ready to just you know explode and let go or you feel like that rubber band is get ready to pop but you just keep on stretching that faith and god just keeps on stretching and stretching and stretching and then before you know it god just shows up and shows out because let me explain something to you he knows what we can handle he knows how much we can handle he knows when to say okay enough is enough he knows my daughter can only get to this point he knows that my son can only get to that point he knows that it'll get to a point where you know it may want to take you back to your was been days and we don't need to revert back to the days of old because it's fatal it's nothing back there for us and it'll turn us away from where he needs us to be he needs us to continue to keep our feet planted and moving forward he don't need us to be looking back because we don't want to turn into a pillar of salt like last wife we want to make sure that we're seasoning and salting the earth and doing what he says to do we want to make sure that we have forward progress we want to make sure that today is better than it was yesterday we want to make sure that every single time that we're moving forward we're moving forward with diligence and enthusiasm and we're just excited we're courageous we're just we're just doing what he's telling us to do and we're just loving on him because he loves us and he cares for us and he doesn't want to harm us he does not want to harm us he don't even want us to harm ourselves we do a lot of um we we have self-inflicted wounds a lot of things that happen to us a lot of times is because of the things that we do the decisions that we make that just that when we decide that we want to go here or there or stop doing something or not doing enough of something or whatever it is that's what happens to us a lot of the wounds that we have is self-inflicted it's not so much god and it's not the enemy a lot of times it's us so we have to make sure that we're in tune with what god needs us to be he gonna speak to you trust me you know sometimes in a small still voice sometimes he gets audible and he may call your name out really loud i've heard it before but we have to make sure that we're doing what he says to do all the time nothing wavering you know, we say, I won't go back. We say, I give myself away. God, I submit to you. Lord, you know, you're better than silver and gold. Oh, we sing all these wonderful songs, but do we really mean it? Do we really mean what we say? Or does it sound good when we're singing it? At the moment, but then when things really happen, when our back is up against the wall, when we don't know which way we're going to look, where we're going to look to the left or to the right, and we don't know what to do, do we really mean what we say? Or we really believe in what he says? Or we just saying it because, oh, it sounds good. Everybody else is singing it. I'm an alto and I blend nice with the altos. I'm a soprano. I like to hit this note. You say, you know, you say blessings on blessings, rain on me. We, we say all of these things. But do we really believe it even in the songs that we sing? There's revelation in those songs that we sing. But we have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. God's hand don't change. We change we got to hold on to this unchanging hand and stand on faith because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world he is so great and so awesome but we got to make sure that we we connected with the right source that's god he's the source we're the resource the human resource we connect with one another and we help each other pull from the source that's, that's what we do we help the pull from the source so we can keep going each and every day Amen. 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 I'm so glad. I'm so excited about what is going to happen in our next ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And so I just wanted to tell you very quickly that tomorrow we're going to be starting our positivity pledge. And so so some of you, I might be putting you guys on blast. I may be asking you to, to help me out with the positivity pledge. So we want to do we're going to do positivity pledge every single day. 
until the end of the year. I'm so excited about getting to this point because this is, I'm telling you, we this last stretch right here, this final stretch is going to be the setup for the beginning of the next year. It's going to be the setup. Either we're going to just have ourselves ready in, in the starting blocks and we just moving forward and we jumping over those hurdles or we just want to let them be in the way. We're not going to let them be in the way. We're going to make sure that we finish this year and we're going to finish strong because that's what we do. Amen. Amen. Father, we are so grateful. So grateful, so thankful. We are so prayerful. We are just so gracious for everything that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are, for being God and God alone. Thank you for reminding us that we are the salt of the earth. Thank you for reminding us, Father, that we can do all things through Christ that give us strength. Thank you for reminding us, Father, that we are to be courageous, Lord strong, bold as lions, that we can come, Lord, and lay our cares at the altar because you care for us. We thank you that you are uh, showing us unconditional love. We thank you right now, Father, for reminding us that you are the source and everything else is a resource, that we seek ye first, the king, and He, all those things will be added unto us. We thank you right now, God, for who you are in our lives. Thank you for being our Alpha and Omega. Thank you for being our beginning and end. Thank you for being our bright and morning star. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace, the Rose of Sharon. Thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith, God. Lord, I thank you right now, Father, for how you're turning things around on our behalf. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that the gifts inside of us, Father, is to be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, God. Thank you for reminding us, Father, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you know the plans that you have for us to prosper and not to harm, but to give us hope in the future. Lord, we thank you right now, Father, that we can continue to be reminded, Father, that your word doesn't return until you void. You said everything is set out to do. Indeed, it's going to do. That, Lord, we thank you right now, Father, that you're, we're reminded there is nothing impossible for you, that you're turning things around on our behalf. In the midnight hour, Father, we and stretch our hands to you. Lord, no other help we know, God. And we thank you right now, Father, for you're right there in the midst, in the midst of the storm, Father. We can pull strength from you. Lord, as we continue to enter in the narrow gate, not the wide gate that leads to destruction. Lord, let us be, continue to be reminded, Father, that we are to come collect for ourselves treasures of heaven where rust and, rust and moths do not destroy and thieves don't break in and steal, Lord. We thank you right now, Father, that we can continue to keep pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus, that, Lord, as we put on the whole armor of God to fight off the flaming arrows of the enemy, Father, we thank you right now, Father, that you remind us that even when the enemy comes in like a flood, you would hold up a standard against them, that we are reminded that we indeed are the salt of the earth, that we will sprinkle, Father, and let us continue to be good laborers as we labor in your vineyard. And you remind us, Lord, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, that as we go forth this day, God, we thank you right now for everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do that we don't even know yet exists. We thank you right now for how you continue to bond us closer together for you, Lord, and we continue to keep our ear pressed towards your mouth. Lord, and we are reminded, Father, that as you speak to us, Lord, we are operating in obedience. It's in the mighty name of our master's king. We say amen, 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 amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in. I pray that you will continue to do God's work, that you will be diligent and enthusiastic and remind yourself, my brother, my sister, you are the salt of the earth. Make sure that you season the earth. Don't leave here holding on to that salt shaker. God bless you. And I pray that you have a wonderful, 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 wonderful Wednesday.